What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So today we're going to kind of fool around with uh, bending a shape along an arc and then uh, running it along a circle. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a circle. So in this case I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw a circle with a radius of 3 foot. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a shape that we're going to bend in a circle. And so the way that we're going to want to do that is first of all, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take this curve and I'm going to explode it. And the reason I want to explode it is because I want this measurement right here in the entity info. So you can see how before I explode it, so if I undo this, you can't see the diameter or the, or the length of the, uh, the line around the perimeter of the circle. But when I come in here and I explode it like this, then all of a sudden I have this length. And the reason I want this length is because I want to draw a face that's that long. So I just needed to know how long it is. So we're going to go ahead and draw a canvas and we'll say it's three feet high. And then I'm just going to make it the length of this circle. So in this case, I'm going to make it 18 foot, nine, nine sixteenths inches, just like this. And so I've got kind of my canvas in here that I can start drawing my shapes on. And so basically what I want to do is I want to come in here and um, I basically want to create a design in here that I want to bend along this shape. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and first of all I'm going to break this up into some different pieces. So like for example I'm going to divide this into probably uh, six segments right there just because that um, divides into a nice um, dimension. Then I'm going to come in here and that was six inches by the way. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to divide it into... Whoops. I'm just basically looking at this and seeing the length seeing how close I can get to six inches. So it sounds like probably five and 15 sixteenths is the best I'm gonna be able to do. And that's okay. So basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to uh, use an extension. I'm gonna use an extension called lines to tubes. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna create some tubes along these different pieces. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna draw this line right here. And then I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna use lines to tubes and I'm just gonna create a, we'll start with a half inch tube. See what that looks like. I think that's probably about what I'm looking for. Um, so you can see what that did is that came in here and that created this tube um, along this line all the way along this face. It's a half inch thick. And so we're going to do the same thing with the up and down portion of this. So we're going to select these lines right here. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line along this face. So I have kind of a single, actually, I'm going to need to weld it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select these two pieces and then use an extension called weld to make these a single piece. Huh, it does not want to do that. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll move a copy of these out here just so we can make it a single uninterrupted path. Just like this. So we'll select these two pieces, we'll weld it into one piece, and then we'll use lines to tubes to create another tube along this piece, just like this. So, so we've created this tube. I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and come in here, reverse all these faces, and then I'm gonna move this piece back over here using the move tool. There we go. And so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to make copies of this with the move tool all the way along this face. So I'm going to make this copy right here and then I'm going to type in times 35. That's not quite enough. So type in times 37 times 38 and hit the enter key. So what I did is I made 38 copies of that piece just like this. So now I'm going to do the same thing with this top piece and I'm going to hide this piece for a second just so I can see this line and use it as kind of an inference point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up here and then I'll make a copy coming down here just like this and I'll just type in times six. And you can see what that did is that created this uh, this kind of lattice shape all the way along this face. And so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna unhide the piece that I hid right here. And so now I've got kind of the general shape that I want. And uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here with radial bend and we're gonna bend this 180 degrees. So first thing I would recommend you do when you do this is that you come in here and save your model. So save a copy of your model before you do any of this because you're starting to deal with a lot of geometry and uh, it starts to get a little bit uh, a little bit tricky. 
All right, so once you've come in here and you've saved this, you can take this and uh, you want to activate the radial bend tool in Fredo scale. So that's an extension you can download from the 3D warehouse. But you basically want to come in here and you want to start from this point right here. And you basically want to draw, your, you, it asks you to tell it a reference direction. So you're basically telling it, I want you to go along this line and this is where we're going to bend it. So you're going to come over here and you're going to click on this intersection point. Then you're going to click again to set that as your target point. And that's just telling you, or that's just telling it this is where I want you to bend this object. So now what you're going to do is you can see how this gives you kind of a preview. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to type in 180 degrees and hit the enter key and it'll take a little it'll take a little while to do this so because you're creating some new geometry and stuff like that but you can see how it came in here and it created all those different pieces and parts and it looks like it left some guide points in here um, that you may need to come in here and get rid of and so what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to explode all of your lines. That's going to create a lot of different geometry in here. So it may take a little while, but otherwise you're going to have to double click in each one of these to erase all these guides. So you're going to want to come in here. You want to drag your mouse across this face just like this to select everything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move it away from my circle before I do this, but I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click explode. So, and that's going to take a little while because you're going to create a lot of geometry by doing this. But once you explode it, then you can come in here and you can select all these guide points. Anyway, so what you're going to do now is you're going to come in here and you're going to erase all this extra geometry that's sitting over here. So you can kind of drag a mouse across it to erase it just like this. It's kind of leaving some stuff behind here from when the model was created. So you can just come in here, drag your mouse across it and just delete it just like this and so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to take this piece our kind of curve piece over here and we're going to make a copy of it and flip it so just activate the move tool in copy mode and then i usually do this with the scale tool it may take a little while to make that copy just because that's a lot of geometry and actually it may be better for you to come in here select all this and make it a component so you can come up here and do edit make component and we'll just call this half and then we'll make a copy of it that'll run a lot faster so you can come in here make this a component flip it in place and then kind of move this back straight across on the red axis so your lines kind of line up right here that way you don't get any kind of like um, disconnection where these two points come together but then what you're going to do is you're going to come in here you can go ahead and group these if you want but they're going to be this is twice as big right now as this uh, as this radius because remember we took the entire length and bent it 180 degrees so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to scale it by 50 percent just like this so you see when I cut it in half um, now this entire uh, diameter is going to be the same as the diameter of our circle so I can just take that piece I could just select the bottom point of this intersection over here and I could just move this onto my circle um, so that it kind of fits the way that it's supposed to. So you can see how now that's kind of sitting on top of this piece just like this. And then you can come in here in your component and uh, you can use and you can come in here and you can color up your faces just like this. You can make those clear and there you go. So. So anyway, this is more of a principle tutorial in, in the fact that this may not be a super interesting shape, but uh, now that you know how to do this, you can model more interesting shapes and then bend them along a circle as well uh, using kind of the same principles. So in any case, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Uh, is this something that uh, you could see yourself doing in a model in the future? Was there anything you would have liked me to see? You would have liked to see me do differently. I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. So if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That'll just help me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.